Today we have a very, very practical topic. We're going to be talking about anger. How many relationships have you had that you no longer have because you couldn't resolve anger? Or uh, how many relationships have never been quite the same after you had a huge argument and there were lots of anger? Well, if you're anything like me, you'll remember incidents in the past where anger has really negatively impacted your relationships. And not only can anger negatively impact our relationships, but they can also have an effect on us, even on our, even on our health, even on our bodies. So the scripture speaks a lot about anger. A lot of a lot about how to deal with anger and how, how not to deal with anger and we're going to be looking at a passage from Ephesians and this is the context is this this is written by the Apostle Paul and he is coaching a group of new believers followers of Christ and because they're new and because they're new to this whole idea of spiritual growth and understanding and transformation and change and following Christ, he spells out all sorts of things that are expected of them now that they have to grow up and live as children of the light, as he says. In other words, now that you have professed to follow Christ, there's going to be major, major changes and how you live. And Jesus would add, and not only are you going to change your behavior toward others and how you think about yourself and how you think about the world, not only going to change your behavior, but your actual inside, your heart, your, your, your core, your essence, that's going to change too. So that you're not just pretending to be loving, you're not just pretending to be forgiving. You're not just acting it out. You're actually becoming a more compassionate person. So he begins by saying uh, lines like, you know, now you've got to learn how to live as children of light because this is who you're following. You're following the light of the world. So obviously if we're following the light of the world, and we're doing what Jesus did in the world, we're going to become light ourselves. We're going to make a difference. And he says, now he uses a lot of symbolism, but he says, what I want you to do is I want you to learn how to put off your old self and put on your new self. So sometimes I've found that it's helpful to even think about it like a garment, that you take a garment and you put it on. So it's like you're putting on kindness and say you're taking off bitterness. Now, he starts to list in this text all the different things that you need to learn how to take off. We're not going to go through them all just now, just going to concentrate on one thing and that's anger because he says you need to learn how to take off or another way of saying it is it's not so much get rid of it, it's more a case of don't let it rule you or guide you. So he says in verse 25, take off lying and anger and unwholesome talk and take off bitterness, that's not going to help you, and take off rage and take off slander and take off malice. All that needs to be removed. All that gets in the way. You're becoming a new person. You're going to be changed from the inside out. Now, that being said, being changed from the inside out, for centuries, of course, the church has, has had its problems with hypocrisy. And hypocrisy is pretending to be one way on the outside pretending to be loving, pretending to be kind, pretending to be, to, to be compassionate, and then doing all sorts of other things that are the opposite of that, uh, out of sight and hidden. 
And then they're exposed and then, you know, everybody's like, oh, look at that, you know, the church is terrible, they're corrupt and everything else. So from the very beginning of time, since Jesus' teaching, he has spoken strongly against hypocrisy, which, which is basically play acting. So we're not really talking about, we, when we start to talk about being forgiving and being loving and being kind, we're not really talking about pretending to be that way. Jesus is speaking about the actual capacity to become. And of course, that's, <laughs> that takes a complete heart change. So Jesus says the same thing in uh, Matthew 5 about anger. He spoke a lot about anger. He said, um, in the past, you all learned that, it, you all learned the commandment in the past, do not murder. And we would all agree with that. Every, every one of us would say, yeah, that's a good commandment. Don't murder. This is not a good way to live. We don't, nobody has any issues with that commandment. And then Jesus comes along and says, well, it's more than just murdering someone. What I'm teaching you is don't even become angry with someone. Don't even become angry with someone. Because if you're angry, it's just as bad as murdering. Now, of course, he's exaggerating as all the rabbis used to do. He's exaggerating to get the point over that it's not just about, you know, not murdering not doing all the big wrongs of the world. It's also about the inner, the inner condition and your attitude toward people, your motivations, your heart, why you do what you do. It's almost like Jesus is saying, when you follow me, what I want to do is I want to help you grow up and mature into a loving presence in this world. Now that's not always easy because um, there's lots of things that get in the way of us being a loving presence. And one of the things that get in the way of us being a loving presence is our problems with anger, which everyone has, by the way. Everyone has a problem with anger. Um, it's just that we express it differently. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. It's a very, very tricky subject to talk about uh, it's easily misunderstood um, because it's not so much you're not allowed to be angry because everybody does get angry, right? It's more about what do you do with your anger? The scripture assumes everybody's going to get angry. The scripture assumes that. If you're human, you'll get angry. If you, It's an emotion, right? If, like any other emotion. It's, but, but, the, but anger is a little, little bit trickier than, than some other emotions, and we'll get into that you know, uh, later here. But uh, even Jesus, as those of you who know the scripture quite, quite well, will know that even Jesus got angry. So it's like, okay, well, you know, when Jesus went into the temple and he turned on over all the tables and he was angry at all the corrupt money lenders who were doing business in the, in the sanctuary, in the worship place, how come that's okay? And yet in other places he speaks about don't get angry. So that how is that? What is what does it mean? Does it mean that all I I guess it means all anger can't be bad? Yeah, well, yes, I think that's exactly what it means. Not all anger is bad. Like Paul said, in your, in your anger, don't sin. In your anger, what's sin? Sin is getting completely off track. Sin is going completely in the wrong direction and hurting yourself and other people. How do you know when something's sin? It either hurts you, it either hurts the world, or it hurts other people. It's, there's always breakage involved of some sort. There's always damage involved. So Paul says, in your anger, don't sin. So yeah, you're going to get angry, but what are you going to do with that energy? How are you going to handle that? 
How are you going to handle it? Everyone's going to be angry. Now, some of us are in touch with our anger more than others. This is a personality thing, right? Because uh, there's going to be some people who will say, well, I rarely get angry. In fact, I can't even remember the last time that I lost my temper. I can go for days and days and days and not be angry. And at some level, that can be true. Um, but even people who rarely display anger would admit, yes, there's, there's been occasions where I've actually lost my cool and, and I've really lost my temper and it's, it's not, been, not been a pretty sight, right? So even people that are really laid back and calm and easygoing, in fact, sometimes they're the worst ones, that when they explode, it's like, oh my goodness, watch out. Because there's been a lot of stuff that hasn't been said for many, many, many months. So it's not so much the feeling of anger that is the problem in the scripture. It's not the feeling of getting angry or getting irritated. It's more a case of what you do with the feelings. Um, I think we I think we would all I think we've all experienced this that anger is is very powerful and it can motivate you to say and do things that upon reflection you might think oh I wish I hadn't said that I wish I hadn't done that I wish I wouldn't I wish I hadn't worded it that way um, oftentimes when things are spoken or written in anger, absolutely not helpful. Like I said at the beginning of this talk here, I mean, how many relationships have grown cold? I mean, even if it's not a case of a major falling out, you know, if there's a lot of anger in a relationship, there comes a point where it's like, I really don't want to be a part of this. I don't want to be involved with this person anymore. It's just not satisfying at any level is it so anger the reason that I think one of the reasons that anger is is tricky to talk about is is because anger is often a secondary feeling now this won't be new information for to most of you but it's just worthwhile I was I think it's just worthwhile to be re reminded of these basic things that anger is often a secondary feeling. In other words, it's easier to feel anger than it is to feel hurt. So we might be hurt by someone's actions or words or indifference, but we might become angry because we're hurt. We're not really, really angry when you think about it, we're actually hurt. It's a secondary emotion, it's a secondary feeling. The same thing with grief. We might be grieving and then that might come over as anger. So it's not that, I mean, it takes a wee bit reflection, self-reflection to even get in touch with your anger and to know, is, is, uh, is it truly, am I truly angry or is it something else? Am I feeling vulnerable? Am I feeling abandoned? Am I feeling sad? It's a lot easier to feel anger because you have a sense of power and control and strength. It's a lot easier to feel anger than it is, say, to feel vulnerability or abandonment. So anger can come over. Uh, we can feel angry about something, but the bottom line is we're not really angry about it at all. We feel abandoned. So, I mean, it takes a little bit prayer, self-reflection, quietness, however you get in touch with these deeper realities that's going on inside of you um, before you can address anger at any level, really. Um, another thing is that anxiety and worry can be the core issue, but it can come over as ang being angry about something. And then when you step back from that and think about it, it's nothing about, it's not really because you're, you're angry at this person, it's because you're worried about something. 
right? So anger is the secondary feeling. It's, it's, it's a secondary emotion. And uh, you can't really deal with anger until you have a little bit of self-knowledge is essential, really, when you get into these sorts of topics in the scripture. You have to be able to stop, take a step back, and assess, and don't assume that anger is just straightforward anger because somebody else is a jerk. It might not be that straightforward at all, right? could be about you feeling incompetent or not being wrong or whatever. So again, I know that most of this isn't new information, but I think it's important to remember this because when Paul and the scriptures speak about taking off anger or getting rid of anger or not letting anger lead, uh, we have to be aware of what kind of anger we're dealing with within ourselves. You know, so when we feel angry or we feel irritated or we feel impatient, all of these things can be a flag of sorts, like a spiritual red flag. Impatience, maybe we're not really impatient about with the person in front of us that's too slow in doing something that we want done. Maybe it's not that. Maybe I'm worried about my kid who's sick or something. You know what I mean? It's secondary. You know, it's like, well, you, are you really annoyed at all these crazy bad drivers or are you actually worried about the future or worried about your marriage, your partnership? It's not really where you would like it to be. There's conflict at home. Is it really about the bad drivers on the road that you're getting furiously annoyed about or are you worried about your daughter? or your son, or your best friend. See, so many times it can be misplaced. Um, and it comes over as anger, because it feels stronger. It feels like you're in control. It's complete illusion, of course. Before we can deal with anger, we have to know what are we really, what are we really feeling? Because it can be so easily transferred onto others. It's your fault. You did this. You said this. Yeah, well, that might trigger your anger, but the anger was there long before that incident happened or that person came along to annoy you. They just happened to trigger your anger and get you going. But it was actually there all the time, see? So Paul speaks about this, and not in these terms that I've used, but the whole idea of you know, don't let the sun go down while you're still, still angry. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean we can get everything accomplished in a day when he says, you know, don't, the old way is don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Well, obviously, we can't deal with all our stuff in a day. But I think what he's getting at here is the idea that anger can fester. Anger can be there a long, long time. Anger can be there for years and years uh don't let it build up this is a powerful energy we're talking about here this 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 is a powerful energy that can not only affect your actions but it also affects your body and what you do why do you know what's that whole business with high blood pressure and anger i mean it affects our body we carry it with us and the same is true for the people who um, say, I rarely, rarely get angry, which is probably true, right? But again, anger is a tricky thing. Sometimes anger can be swallowed or forgotten, really not dealt with. We can be masters at not feeling what we don't want to feel. And for some of us, we don't want to feel anger, right? For whatever reason, we don't want to feel it. And so we don't. We can actually go for weeks and not feel anger. It doesn't mean that we're 
not getting angry or that people aren't doing things that make us angry or saying things that make us angry, it means that we've built up capacity over the years to not address it. Now that's bad too, you know, that's not really helpful at all, is it? I mean, all sorts of things when it's internalized like that, all sorts of unhelpful results can make us depressed, right? Undealt with anger, we're carrying all that load around with us. It can lead to all sorts of, of problems and addictions and depression and feeling unworthy and all sorts of things. So really swallowing it and uh, not displaying it and just being sort of stubborn and resistant to everything around us, not really the best answer, is it? I mean, you don't display your anger, but you're never really getting to the bottom of the problem either. You can carry around this sort of hidden anger. Well, it's what we call passive aggressive, isn't it? It's when you pretend that you're not angry and you just do things quietly, maybe even with a smile on your face. Yeah, scripture says, really not helpful at all. Not a good way to live. And it's like we have to learn how to be honest with ourselves. Actually, Paul in this passage speaks about learning how to be honest with other people which we do have to learn that. We also have to learn how to be honest with ourselves, which is all about self-reflection. Being able to sit down and take stock and look at what we're doing and why we're doing it. We're never going to grow spiritually or emotionally unless we can do this self-reflection. Um, yeah, you know, with hidden anger, Lots of, the, lots of time, if you're the type of person that hides anger or swallows it or denies it, there's a good chance that you're a peacekeeper rather than a peacemaker, right? Blessed are the peacemakers. Big difference between a peacekeeper and a peacemaker, but we can't, don't have time to go into all of that, but that's, that'd be worth its own teaching. So we all struggle with anger in different ways. So it's not so much, oh, I don't really have an issue with this and others do. I think it's more, we all have it. That's why Jesus spoke about anger so much and Paul spoke about anger so much. We, humanity has an anger problem. Everybody has anger issues as we say nowadays but we manifest them in different ways. So I can be passive and resistant and stubborn and be angry with a smile on my face, or I can be loud and bossy and explosive and do it that way and everybody knows, well, watch out. There she is, she's angry again, here she goes, like a bull in a china shop. Yeah, well, that can happen too, it's two different kinds doesn't really matter where we, how we display it or not, Paul would say, you have to learn how to take this off, which is all about recognizing it and not letting it lead. Remember, if we're following Christ's way, we can't let any other negative energy lead us. Now, you know that anger can, it can actually propel us towards something good for sure. But a lot of the time, our anger isn't necessarily propelling us toward good things on behalf of the world and the planet and humanity. A lot of the time, anger is just defending us, defending our own egos. It's all about me. And that's where it gets us into trouble. But the idea to, of following Christ is, is that, you know, no, let's have another energy lead here. Let's recognize anger for what it is, its limitations, its uses and its limitations, but let's not have it lead us. Let's have Christ's way lead us. Well, what is Christ's way? Well, it's not anger, right? It would be the energy of compassion. It would be the energy of forgiveness. It would be the energy of goodness. It's really the opposite. In fact, 
You can't really follow anger and follow Christ. The two energies are two, they're, they're opposites and they lead in different ways. So that's why Paul says you have to learn how to take off anger, not be led by that, not be informed by that, wait. Wait, I mean, if you're angry, angry, it's not really a good time to make a decision, is it, when you're angry? It's not really wise to have that conversation if you're angry, right? Or make the decision. Sometimes it's better to just wait, step back. That's, this is what prayer is. It's waiting, it's stepping back, it's getting a clearer perspective. It's so allowing the spirit to come and give you a clearer way rather than just be all reactionary and continually react to the anger of others, which of course never helps us. It never moves us forward in any way. And so both Paul and Jesus have this lengthy, lengthy teachings on dealing with anger, which is not allowing it to lead which is about recognizing it and following Christ. We, so there's the heart cry in this text, I think, or one of the heart cries is, God, show me where I'm angry and what is that about, really? You know? Show me where I'm at. Chances are we know where we're angry. Chances are we know who we're angry at or what we're angry at. I think the prayer might be, is that really what it's about? Or is it something else? And once that shows itself, really is, it, is exposed in some way, it starts to lose its power. And when that anger starts to lose its power like that, that's when we have a chance of learning how to follow Jesus. Amen.